New at 11, what is this blue cloud? Whatever it is, it's forcing Valley residents to hold their breath. The developing story next. Plus, being in the in crowd may be a problem, but see how kids are helping other kids find solutions at 11. Now, with more complete coverage from across Southern Nevada to where you live, this is News 13 Inside Las Vegas, live at 11. A look at gang life tonight in the northern part of the valley as another violent summer looms ahead. And it's been decades in the making, the decision to bring the nation's nuclear waste here to southern Nevada. Today it was given the okay by the president to move forward. We'll have those stories in just a moment, but first a developing story out of Green Valley. Good evening, I'm Kathy Ray. And I'm Sean Boyd. Hazardous material crews and the FBI are on the scene of what's believed to be a toxic spill. It's happening at the corner of Stephanie and American Pacific, where a 200-yard perimeter has been set up. The area, though near homes, is undeveloped. Authorities say there's a liquid that's smoking and burning with a low blue flame. Some people are complaining of respiratory symptoms. But at this hour, officials still have not figured out what it is or where it came from. We'll bring you more information as it becomes available to us. Now to the top story of the day, the president's decision to give Yucca Mountain a thumbs up. But Nevada lawmakers are saying not so fast. Today's approval is stirring up debate all around the country and, of course, right here where it matters the most. The president's formal approval letter sent to Congress says, proceeding with this repository program is necessary to protect public safety, health, and the nation's security. However, from Governor Kenny Gwynn to local politicians to you, the residents of Southern Nevada, everyone says the president went back on his promise. Of President Bush's decision, while not surprising to anybody in the state of Nevada, is still felt like a slap in the face, according to Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley. It can't be done. It shouldn't be done. It's dangerous, and and the people of the state of Nevada are going to stand up for our rights. Just a day after getting the recommendation from his energy secretary, President Bush gave the go-ahead for Yucca Mountain to become the nation's permanent high-level nuclear waste site. He did go back on his word. He promised during the campaign that it would be science that would determine whether or not Yucca Mountain was a suitable site. All Americans should be concerned, not just because he lied to me and the people of Nevada, indeed all Americans. But even more disturbing is that the president's decision threatens American lives. But despite what the Department of Energy says, those close to the situation disagree. And if anybody thinks that it's going to be safe to, to send 77,000 tons of toxic nuclear waste across 43 states into a hole in the Nevada desert, they are sadly mistaken. That's exactly why Governor Gwynn plans on fighting this to the bitter end. And he will use the laws of the land to prove his argument. This is a strategy to move forward. And I've always felt that we have the best chance in court. This law is a rather unique law, and it really gives us uh, one more advantage uh, for the state of Nevada. One that I guess the only advantage we have is, is that as the governor of the state of Nevada, I have the authority under this law to uh, veto the president's decision. And I fully intend to do that. So, what's next in this process to bring nuclear waste to southern Nevada? Right now, Congress has the president's recommendation. Nevada has 60 days to veto it. Now, Congress can then override that veto by passing a joint resolution. If that happens, the resolution becomes law and the site is approved. Now, our website has a lot more information on the Yucca Mountain plan, plus a Yucca Mountain diagram and an interactive poll. Now, you can log on to YourInsideLasVegas.com and click on the top story. The federal government is taking steps to build the first new nuclear power plants in more than 20 years. The administration is now considering possible sites, and they include plants in Idaho, Ohio, and South Carolina. About 20% of the nation's electricity is generated by nuclear power plants. The Bush administration wants to build several new plants by the year 2010. New tonight, a search is on for the drive-by shooters who hit three people late today. Police think it was gang-related, not a new occurrence to that violence-riddled area near MLK in Lake Mead. Now, last summer was one of the bloodiest on record there, and some say tonight's shooting may be a signal of more to come. News 13 Scott Burton is in the newsroom right now with more complete coverage for us. Scott, could we really be seeing the start of another big shootout? Well, Kathy, Metro is not saying officially that this is the beginning to a gang war, but a lot of people who live in that area say they wouldn't be surprised if it was. Summer 2001. <laughs> An 
eight-month bloodbath of gang violence in the MLK Lake Mead hood. Take this stuff, man. I can't go through it no more. Shooting after shooting with more than a dozen people dead, oh, including an innocent mother. Oh, my God. It was one of the most violent gang wars the Valley's ever seen. Don't get me. I'm gonna make y'all arrest somebody out here today. And another may be on its way. Looks like if we're the people that we believe were involved are involved, it may be a retaliation. Today, a drive-by shooting left a car bullet riddled and three more victims in the hospital. It's bad. Talk to the people who live in the area, they'll tell you it never ends. All I see is people getting shot and getting killed. The motivation for the violence? Power, attention, and a battle for territory. A battle that goes on and on. Yeah, it's like a circle that's going round and around. The suspects in tonight's shooting are still on the run, while their victims lie in hospital beds, holes in their bodies. I don't like that at all. Where does it go from here? Only the gangs oh, know. Wondering why, why are they in the gangs and stuff? It's a battle in the MLK Lake Mead hood. Heats up for another summer. Now, police say the suspect in today's shootings got away in a primer gray El Camino. If you have any information which may help stop this potential gang war from exploding, you're asked to call North Las Vegas Police or Metro. We're live in the newsroom tonight. I'm Scott Burton, News 13 Inside Las Vegas. Okay, Scott. A Major League Baseball player with ties to Las Vegas was killed in a car crash. San Diego outfielder Mike Dar died early this morning in Phoenix near his team's spring training camp. Investigators say he lost control of his SUV and flipped, then rolled across three lanes of traffic and crashed into a fence. A 23-year-old Reno man was also killed, and a minor league pitcher was slightly injured. Dar played for the Las Vegas Stars during the 1999-2000 season. One of the most serious sex offenders in the state has been arrested. Metro police say two nights ago, he sexually assaulted a woman he had met on the Internet. Now, this right here is Vincent Mark Santana. He's under arrest for sexual assault and kidnapping. Detectives say after meeting the woman on the Internet and setting up a date, Santana lured the woman into his car and allegedly assaulted her. The 43-year-old is being held in jail without bail. A construction warning if you're heading out on the highways tonight. The lanes on Interstate 15, well, they're changing again. This is a live picture right now of the area we're talking about. It's between Charleston and Sahara, and things seem to be moving along pretty well at this point. Traffic will shift in the construction zone tonight and stay this way through next Saturday. Be ready for delays if you normally travel that route. The International Skating Union and Olympic officials agreed to have two gold medal winners. The Canadian figure skating team has been awarded a gold medal. This is in addition to the Russian pair who won it Monday night. The move comes after days of speculation that the judging was fixed. Now the French judge has been suspended because of evidence of misconduct. And speaking of athletes, there's a new gym in the valley and this one has a famous owner. Absolute Boxing and Fitness Gym is on the southeast side of town on South Pecos Road near Sunset. Now it's owned by female boxing sensation Layla Ali and her former husband or her husband, former boxer Johnny Yaya McLean. But it was the champ himself who stole the show. He stepped out of limo and into the ring, helping his daughter promote her new venture. Absolute is for amateurs and professionals, boxers and non-boxers alike. Classes, kickboxing, jump rope classes. So it's just open to everybody. Kids ten, from age 10 and up, you know, they want to fight as amateurs and come in and train with the trainers. So. Layla will teach classes and train at the facility as well. Her dad also joked about training for a comeback at the new gym. An ironic twist tonight in the American Taliban case. Because of court timetables, John Walker Lynn's trial is set for September 11th. That will be the one-year anniversary of the terrorist attacks in New York and Washington, D.C. Today, a judge scheduled the date for jury selection to begin come late August. Lind faces 10 charges in federal court, including supporting terrorists. He faces a maximum sentence of life behind bars. Meantime, a minister in Afghanistan's interim government is dead. Tonight, the country's leader, Hamid Karzai, is calling it an assassination. The Afghan Minister of Aviation and Tourism, Abdul Rahman, was stabbed to death. 20 suspects are linked to the killing, including five senior military officials in the interim government. Karzai says the attack stems from a long-standing feud. Monday is President's Day, and along with schools being closed, many businesses are too. Now, here's just a few of the closings. All government buildings and offices. The post office is closed, so no mail delivery. 
Utility companies such as Southwest Gas, Nevada Power, and Sprint are also closed. And holidays always mean one thing in Las Vegas, more tourists. Now here's a live look at the strip from our Stratacam right around Sahara. And of course with the tourists come uh, quite a bit of traffic, although that looks like some, I don't know, pretty normal traffic right now. Well, tourism officials are expecting more than a quarter million out-of-town guests. Now, they say Valentine's Day, coupled with the Chinese New Year, is attracting the high number. And there it goes. Well, you may have just watched John Stossel's ABC special on school bullying. Still ahead, we visit one local elementary school where a program to cut back on playground violence is really paying off. Plus, just a 45-minute drive and you could be nearly $200 million richer. Yes, it's lotto fever. Nate? Oh, I've got a bad case of lotto fever. Uh, we'll also talk about the weekend forecast. Some changes may be coming for Sunday. The forecast when News 13 at 11 continues with more complete coverage inside Las Vegas. Monday at 5. Local nurses are leaving Valley Hospitals in record numbers, with many doctors already planning to quit. How will this affect you and your health care? See what's being done to correct this problem. Monday at 5 on News 13, inside Las Vegas. Now, more complete coverage continues with Kathy Ray, Sean Boyd, Trisha Keene with Contact 13, Nathan Tenenbaum with your complete forecast, and Ron Futrell with sports. This is News 13, inside Las Vegas. All right, so check. Do you have your ticket for tomorrow's Super Lotto Plus drawing? If not, you may want to think about taking perhaps yeah. a little drive. That's because it's up to right now 183 million and growing. And yes, this is the largest jackpot ever in California. No winning ticket was sold for Wednesday's drawing, which kicked up the kitty a bunch. Now, if you're looking to get a ticket, head over to the border a little past Prim. And I believe there are about 70 of us here in the station. At least, yeah. At News 13 who have thrown in some money to our kitty. I have not had my kitty kicked up. You haven't uh, had your kitty no. kicked up. Yeah. Well, well, there are some we'll organizations that would appreciate yeah, Exactly. That. <laughs> but good luck to everybody. I mean, okay, obviously. You may be here alone on Monday night. <laughs> <Yeah. you know? laughs> Whatever. Who knows? We'll see how it turns out, right? Yeah. We'll be uh, tuning in for the numbers on Saturday yeah, night. Absolutely. We've got some numbers for you right now, and that would include a pretty good looking start to the weekend with some changes coming for Sunday. Mountain cams looking down on the city. There are a couple of clouds around. We're hanging at 50 degrees at this hour. Humidity 30%. Wind is coming from the south at 5 miles an hour. We're going to talk more about that here in just a second when we look at the neighborhoods. The barometer is falling 30.18. Now, before we uh, complete our tour of the cities, we wanted to talk about this intersection uh, where this uh, mystery smoke is showing up. Here is the I-215, and this is where uh, St. Rose Parkway kind of turns off. So Stephanie and American Pacific is kind of up this way. It is kind of an unpopulated area where that so-called blue smoke is coming from. Well, our nearest weather sensor uh, at the time at plant is showing zero wind from the northeast. In other words, there's no wind down there whatsoever. So this unpopulated area is should be a pretty much no concern. Of course, we're going to keep an eye on that story down there and try to find out more about what that little mystery cloud is. Okay, let's continue our tour and talk about temperatures. 50 degrees officially this hour at McCarran, 52 in Henderson, 49 up at Nellis Air Force Base. North Las Vegas is at 51. Summerlin, you're into the upper 40s at this hour. The National Weather Service sharing that 48 degree reading. A beautiful day all over. We did have some kind of passing clouds. Uh, Mount Charleston's right at the freezing mark. 63 for Laughlin over the hump in Pahrump. Our good buddy Steve Benson with a 49, 47 right now in Kingman. Well, the numbers from today, there's the high of 64, followed the morning low of 48. Sun gets up on your Saturday morning at 628. Well, let's check in and see what's going on as far as air quality is concerned. We have a couple of moderate readings of dust there up in the northeast part of town. Nothing to do with what's going on down in the unpopulated areas of Henderson. 74 uh, carbon monoxide and ozone readings are in the good category. So let's move on and talk about the cloud situation. Well, uh, let's see, Sean and Kathy passed with flying colors their cutoff low pressure quiz yesterday. That system is now being pushed on shore. We'll continue to see some cloudiness. Right now, there's some questions amongst the meteorologists in the weather world about what exactly is going to happen with that one offshore. Right now, the thinking is to put a slight chance for showers in for Sunday afternoon. Right now, temperatures around the southwest, 55 for L.A. and for San Diego, 35 right now in Albuquerque. How about your family and friends across the nation? Well, we got, uh, let's see, what is it in the Big Apple right now? 41 with the 20s right now over the Rockies. Not much rain or snow to talk about. Some scattered flurries across the northern Great Lakes and some rain across some portions of the Deep South. 
and a couple of showers with this new system coming on shore. That's for California. The Nate cast for the rest of tonight says just a couple of clouds. We think you'll wake up on your Saturday morning to 44 with generally calm wind. During the day tomorrow, a beautiful day, a couple of clouds, but if anything, even warmer. We're thinking close to 70 again tomorrow. Southeast breezes to 15. So you're going to go do some skiing? Go for it. 52 on the mountain tomorrow. Slight chance for some snow flurries up there on Sunday afternoon. Out at the lake, the water temp still that cold 48, but 72 the afternoon high. And let's do the five-day forecast with President's Day coming up on Monday. Now, whether we have rain or not, it's really not going to be a big concern. I don't think. I think the temperature drop is going to be the big thing. 60 instead of near 70 tomorrow. Mm. Okay. okay, that's still on bed. Yep. All righty, yeah. Nate. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, tonight on 2020, John Stossel took an in-depth look at today's students, what makes certain kids popular, and how far some of them are willing to go to make it to the in crowd. But here in the Valley, some schools are turning to their own student body to help stop playground bullying. News 13's Kate Turner has more complete coverage. Hey, boys, line up! Recess is filled with fun and games. <laughs> but it can also be filled with heartbreak for some kids. Kids are very cruel, and especially when they get in gangs and gang, gang up on people who don't look like they look, you know, are not as smart, can't play ball as well. The grass freeze! Ashley Huddleston, a What's fifth name? grader at Elizondo Elementary School, sees it every single day. It hurts. It really does hurt. Ashley is on the school's peace patrol. That means when there's trouble on the playground, Ashley steps in. They just don't like it, and they come up because they are tired of it, and they want help. Their orange jackets are a staple on the playground. Carrying their clipboards, these kids keep their eyes and ears open, watching out for fellow students in need. <laughs> it's the school's way of fighting playground violence and bullying. When the Peace Patrol spots trouble, they start finding solutions. No, do you want to solve this with us or an adult? Daniel so Campbell is just adult. eight years old, but he's already been trained in conflict resolution. And we ask each one what happened. And so we would try to combine them and say, what do you think would be a peaceful solution? It sounds like a pretty basic program. Yeah. And you may not think it works, uh -huh. but you'd be wrong. Sometimes I heard a kid say one time they're doing something and I was walking by them. They're like, oh no, there's a peace patrol. The school says more than just solving conflicts, the peace patrol is preventing the children them. do know that not only are the students there, but the peace patrol advisors are there, you know. And presence is power. And this power is a number. With 75 members of Elizondo's Peace Patrol, that's enough power to keep most of the fights off the playground and keep the bullies at bay. In North Las Vegas, Kate Turner, yeah. News 13, inside Las They're Vegas. All Clark County schools teach some type of conflict resolution. At Elizondo, the Peace Patrol has been so successful in just its second year that so far, the school has had no required parent conferences and no suspensions this year because of fighting. Well, one of the richest men in America is bringing his millions to Las Vegas. Right into a local restaurant chain. Contact 13 has the juicy details next. Now, with more complete coverage, News 13 continues with Contact 13. If you become the victim of identity theft, it could cost you more than $1,000 to fix the problem. Also, a popular psychic service is being shut down. Contact 13's Trisha Keen joins us with more complete coverage. A government official testified that data for identity theft crimes is not being tracked. So, it's hard to tell statistically if it actually is the fastest growing crime. Identity fraud has been connected to other crimes, such as bank fraud and credit card fraud. Here in Nevada, the biggest complaint for consumers in the year 2001 was identity theft. And it's easy to become a victim if you lose your social security card or driver's license. If someone can get your social security number, your name, your date of birth, and perchance your mother's maiden name, they can become you like that. And in 2001, the District of Columbia had the highest rate of identity theft, with 77 victims for every 100,000 people. California and Nevada followed with 45 and 41 victims per 100,000 people 
respectively. Well, Las Vegas-based National Airlines intends to apply for a $70 million government-backed loan next week. That's pending a federal bankruptcy judge's approval of its Chapter 11 reorganization plan. A judge postponed final approval for the reorganization plan until February 26. National must still come to final terms with the nine companies from which it leases its fleet of 15 aircrafts. Federal regulators are trying to shut down the Miss Cleo psychic hotline. The Federal Trade Commission says a hotline is permeated with fraud. The FTC filed the complaint earlier this week in Florida. It accuses the telephone psychic reading service of false promises of free readings, tricky billing tactics, and unrelenting abusive telemarketing calls. The FTC says it acted after getting more than 2,000 complaints. And one of the richest men in America is investing some money in a restaurant chain you see right here in the Valley. Warren Buffett is investing millions into Outback Steakhouse. Buffett's investment company bought 1.8 million shares in the chain worth $47 million. Buffett owns Dairy Queen and holds stock in Coca-Cola. For Contact 13, I'm Trisha Keen inside Las Vegas. Well, the Rebels have Wyoming on the schedule tomorrow night. We'll hear from Coach Spoonhour about the matchup. And the high schoolers are looking to get to the championships. Ron has highlights from tonight's playoffs. It's up next. Neighbors, teachers, friends. They're the ones that make a difference in our lives, in our community. Do you know an unsung hero, a friend, a neighbor, a fellow worker who really deserves special recognition? You can see that they get that recognition now. Nominate that special person for a Jefferson Award, an award for outstanding public service. News 13 wants to honor those who make that positive impact. Nominate your unsung hero for a 2001 Jefferson Award. For details, call or log on to our website and watch News 13 inside Las Vegas. Sports with Ron Futrell, brought to you by the Desert Automotive Group and their 11 dealerships. Now, with more complete coverage, News 13 continues with Ron Futrell and the sports team. All right, the high school basketball playoffs are getting pretty serious right now. Second round going on tonight at Palo Verde. Centennial and Cheyenne going at it. Cheyenne's Keith Richardson with a three-pointer here for the baseline. Richardson, pretty good jump shot there. He can also drive and score, too. As he takes it to the hoop, hits the layup. Cheyenne wins it, 68-54. Other scores, Gorman taking care of Cimarron by 21 tonight. Good matchup between Green Valley and Desert Pines, and the Gators get the win there. And Las Vegas has a tough time with Basic, but the Wildcats finally get the W. On the girls' side, you have Bonanza and Centennial going at it. The Bulldogs always tough on the court. Ashley Blake going to put up the three-pointer here. And then for the Centennial Bulldogs, Rachel Shine gets a bucket plus the foul. It's good. And the Bulldogs with a big win over the Bengals tonight. Also Western over Gorman by four. UNLV plans to have Linda Frulick in the lineup tomorrow night at the Thomas and Mac. She still has not been cleared by the NCAA, but the university officials feel that she will be cleared soon. She's missed the last couple of games because of questions of extra benefits while she played for the German national team. The men play at Wyoming tomorrow afternoon. Big game for them. The Cowboys beat the Rebels at the Thomas and Mac earlier this season. Cowboys in first place in the conference. Still, we wanted to see if Charlie Spoonauer thought they were the best team in the conference right now. They've, they've gone on the road and won where they should have. And, uh, yeah, I, I guess right now you've got to say they are. My gut reaction is that you, you always fear Utah. I just got here and I already fear Utah. So, uh, I just, I, yeah, you'd have to say, though, that, that, that they've earned the spot until somebody knocks them out of there. All right, good day for the USA at the Olympics. The USA gets a silver and a bronze in the men's luge doubles. And a bronze in snowboarding, the giant slalom there. No gold, but a bunch of hardware for the USA. As for the total medal count, USA passing its all-time high for medals at the Winter Games. 13 was the highest before this year. Now we've got 14 of them. There's nine days left in the games. Thank goodness they added snowboarding events. So that's where we're getting a lot of them. Local NASCAR driver Brendan Gaughan finishes 13th today at the truck race at Daytona. Six laps to go. And we got trouble here in the middle of the pack. Jason Leffler gets into a crash, starts everything going all over the place. Chain reaction, big accident there. No drivers hurt. Robert Presley passes Rick Corelli to take the lead with two laps to go, and he wins his first ever truck race. And it's a big one at Daytona. And of course, we're keeping our eye on Kurt Busch. Maybe both eyes on Kurt Busch this weekend yeah, as we watch him at the, Daytona, <laughs> at the Daytona 500. He's um, about 40 to one right now. Oh, okay. okay, all right. He's got a shot. There you go. Okay, when we come back, we'll have an update on that hazmat situation in Henderson. Stay with us. 
Okay, we want to update you now on a hazmat situation in Henderson. Now, crews have determined the blue hazy substance is not toxic. It still could be a little irritating, though. It's happening at the corner of Stephanie and American Pacific. Officials with hazmat are covering up that substance now. They're taking back samples to the lab so they can test it out. We'll have more information tomorrow on News 13 at 6. Nate? Yeah, and I want to talk a little bit more about, I may have misspoken myself, calling that an unpopulated area. It's undeveloped at that intersection, but we know there are streets like Trail Canyon Road, Teal Point Drive, Gallagher Crest. Road, so I want you folks to know that we know you're living out there uh, and right. there's no wind in that area, so that shouldn't be a big factor for you. Just sit right there. Yeah. Right. Dissipate. Okay. There you go. Well, that does it for this edition of News 13 at 11. Have a great weekend. Get out and enjoy that weather.